Hey folks, Stronghold Craft for Kev here. Welcome to my channel. And in this video, we're going to continue my tutorial series on how to make a castle tower out of foam. Yes. Alright. <clears throat> what was I thinking? Anyway, this video I'm going to focus on uh, painting techniques, uh, the base coat, uh, how to do uh, the shading, and uh, if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, feel free to do subscribe because I have a lot more things coming to my channel. I wouldn't want you to miss out. And if you are a subscriber, thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, for more information on my craft, visit my website, which is stoneholdsoffancy.com. And if you liked the video also, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, and I will see you in a bit. Hey folks, welcome back to this tutorial. And uh, let's do a recap. Alright, we've gone through the design part, we've gone through the cutting, we've gone through the detailing, we've gone through the assembly part. Okay, I'm not re reading this word for word, but anyway... Uh, We've done the, ch the checking and, uh, you know, details to blend things together. Now, we are on to the painting phase. And uh, basically this is going to take two parts. It's going to be your uh, base coat and then it's going to be the uh, final coat. So, I will get to that part. Alright, before I get in... Uh, the uh, painting part, uh, I need to explain that uh, you need to test fit any uh, parts that need to be uh, put in place after you paint. Uh, in this case it's going to be the, uh, the hatch for this uh, roof here and on this particular tower there's a, a door here and a door here. So what I did was I decided now it depends on what you want to do. Um, I'm using balsa wood for the uh, the uh, doors and hatches. Uh, you can use another kind of foam. You can carve it in. It, it all depends but that's what I'm gonna do. So I already pre-cut this Now, if you want to be very uh, scrutinizing and you don't want to mix these doors up, you can actually mark which door you want to go on which uh, part of the tower. And you want to make sure these things fit before you start your painting because it can be a real pain in the butt to have to deal with them fitting later because you can actually uh, scrape off parts of the edges if it doesn't fit right and you have to do go back and retouch your paint. And that can be... Um, a nightmare. How about that? For lack of a better word to describe it. So I will prep this and get back to you. Alright, I will do my best to keep my uh, self out of the camera's view. Uh, but what I do is I start with the uh, hard to reach areas first. And some people will think, oh you're crazy, you should paint this first and then put it together. Uh, yeah, I could have done that, but then I have to worry about how things join, what I don't want to paint, and what I do want to paint, and I don't want to paint something and then glue it together, and have to worry about the adhesive uh, being able to stick to the paint as well as, as to the material. So this is the way I do it. Okay, so uh, basically I start with uh, one of the uh, Merlon's edges, and uh, the paint I have is uh, a brand called uh, Artist Loft. It's supposed to be a flow acrylic paint. It does not flow as well as it says it does. So I actually mix it with some water to uh, thin it a little bit and then what I do is let's see here, get here in the camera here. Uh, I start with the the cracks, the in-between parts and I just put it in there very carefully. And of 
course, this is a tight area, so... And I'm generous with the paint. So I put it in there. And it doesn't matter if it's a little bit too much. I'll explain that in a little bit. And then I put the paint to flow down into the cracks. On either side of the uh, Merlon there. Now at this point, I then take that paint and very carefully I spread it around that area. Very gently of course because this is beaded polystyrene and it will uh, break apart if you apply way too much pressure so just keep that in mind and uh, no paint is wasted and that's how simple that can be all right from here uh, I can continue using the brush and work on the, uh, the corners and so forth. Now, the rest of this I would I would continue using the brush in a you know a clockwise or a counterclockwise pattern and work my way down to the outside. I'm going to save you that and uh, go on to the next part. Now I will use the uh, sponge brush for the uh, other areas that are flatter but for for practical purposes I'm just going to keep holding on to this uh, brush and I just dab in my paint and work on the trim pieces next Oh yeah, one more thing I didn't mention was uh, the Merlon, uh, the trim pieces that actually have uh, windows to the inside of the tower. Uh, I only go in as far as the width of the trim piece. I know it's hard to see on this side. Uh, this side, <laughs> there we go. I only go as far as, as the uh, width of the trim piece, so half of that's going to be white, but it won't matter. And one more thing. Uh, I will do a little bit of the brush on the uh, hatch part here. A couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, the pink foam, because it is, it's smooth, pardon my shaking there, uh, it may not stick very well with the paint the first time around, so you may have to use a couple of coats just so the black covers up the pink. Alright, moving right along with a sponge brush, doesn't matter what the width is as long as it fits in the particular area. You can see how you need to get in those cracks and pull it. If you're worried about how much paint you're putting on, don't worry about it. Uh, pull it out as far as you can and when it dries the water will obviously evaporate and it will blend out.
like it needs to. Now for those, you know, hard to reach areas, if it's really a deep crack, you just need to stipple it a little bit and then pull it over. Blend it the best you can. And I'm trying to get here, the lighting kind of it's not working with me because this is dark. Sorry about that. You get the overall uh, idea. Uh, let up the brush, let the flow in the cracks, and then just pull it. Now, it doesn't matter uh, if you paint around the wall first and then do the uh, the indentations where the doors are, or you can just do the doors first and then uh, blend it all together. Like for example, this uh, door, this yeah doorway here. Uh, load the initial area with paint and just pull it out. And oh, not enough paint. Had a stubborn crack there that just did not want to fill in. Now I use sponge brushes on a lot of the larger areas because it's a lot less uh, it's less less harsh to the foam I should say uh, with with bristle brushes they tend to be more scratching and sometimes they can leave marks if you're not careful but no, overall. Yeah, when this is dry, you can actually see more of a shadow effect, um, and uh, I'm not going to take the whole time to paint this in front of the camera, but. Part. But like I said, start with the, with the uh, the Merlons and the roof and then work your way down like I said now you're, you're, you're thinking well you know what about keeping the paint off my hands well that's easy once you start getting to the walls this is going to be drying very quickly uh, by the time you're done and what you can do is insert your hand in the bottom of it and then very carefully uh, move it and then move it again and there you have it. You can paint all the walls. By the time you get on with your last wall to paint, you should be able to pick up one of the, uh, very carefully, one of the solid Merlon parts and pick it up and take it off your hand without getting any paint on your hands. If you do still get paint on your hands, it won't be a whole lot of paint. Alright, and this is what a fully painted, uh, with the base coat, the tower looks like with black. Um, and for the uh, next part I'm going to use a uh, basics uh, paint neutral gray and uh, for this I usually use uh, just a sponge brush uh, you just want to dab some on your uh, brush and it's more of a dry brushing technique, but I just take the uh, excess off, I just scrape it along the side of the bowl, and then uh, very carefully and gently, I just pick a spot, and uh, just for uh, the ease of uh, filming here, I'm just going to do it on the outside. I normally would start at the inside and work my way down, it's like the black stuff. Uh, and very gently 
I'm going to go across here. And no particular pattern or, or whatnot. And uh, you can see how the paint is, is getting a nice uh, varied look to it. Now depending on how much paint you put on your brush and how you apply it will determine uh, how it looks on the uh, the model itself. So when this dries, it's going to dry darker. And you can see right here, just by looking at this one small section, how there's a variance in the, uh, the coloring, if you will. So I'm not going to bother to, I mean, if you really wanted to be more variant with the color, you could add uh, some white paint later on and lighten this up. But I, I'm pretty happy with how, how the gray on the black turns out. And uh, that's the uh, only thing you have to be concerned with is how much you want to apply. And in a lot of cases, I don't really apply more. I'm not going for something solid. I want something to have some variable uh, color to it because that way it looks more realistic uh, with the color. And uh, I will point out here that uh, any openings you have to uh, just, you know, apply it. Now, the straight openings like uh, the aerosolets, that I just use a straight gray and just uh, color them with a small bristle brush. Other than that, everything else except for the inner parts here uh, get the uh, gray. Alright, after it dries, this is how it turns out. Just like so. And you can see how there's... Uh, I tried to minimize the stroke uh, patterns and stuff. But you can see how there's all this variance here with the color. Uh, I'd, I'd love how, how this turns out overall. And you see I left this black because it's going to be covered anyway, so what's the point? Uh, one thing to keep in mind though, make sure you do the uh, inner parts on all the openings with the gray, otherwise it's going to look kind of funny. Uh, and do the inner parts of the trim. And uh, yeah, with the windows here, I need I need to touch up this. This is a little bit too black here with with the uh, cracks. I'm just going to cover over that again and tighten it up a little bit. But overall, you can see how that looks. All right. Thanks for watching. Until the next tutorial. Bye.